So as you can see here, I've opened up the program and I have a clean slate I'm working with. Uh, your first thought upon seeing this may be that it looks a lot like Microsoft Excel and you will be right in that thought to the extent that they are both spreadsheets. However, there are at least two features of SPSS which distinguish it from Excel and which make it particularly useful for uh, employment in the social sciences. The first is what's going on behind the scenes in the variable view tab, which is the area that allows us to define uh, what types of variables we are going to be working with, to, to name them, to uh, identify what level of measurement they are created at, either the ordinal, nominal, or scale, which is what SPSS refers to interval or ratio level data as and the Oversize Novelty Statistical Analysis Engine that is running under the hood. This is really the heart of this program and, and one of the reasons why it is so widely used in the social sciences. So, before I get too far ahead of myself, um, back in the data view main page here with our clean slate, um, along the vertical axis, as you can perhaps see, are all of the cases that will be listed once we create data and along the horizontal axis as you can perhaps see uh, will be all the variables that will be listed once we create our data. Now to reiterate slightly differently uh, variables in the data view are always going to be listed as columns and cases in the data view are always going to be listed along the rows. Okay good um, immediately above the uh, string of variables here, which are as yet unnamed because I haven't defined any of my variables, you will find a bar that indicates uh, the case number, variable name, and value of any given uh, cell which you have selected. Currently it is only listing the case number because I haven't defined any variables or given any values. Uh, immediately above that bar is the what's known as the toolbar menu. This has a variety of um, hotkeys or icons, if you will, which allow you to quickly do things within SPSS. Several of them will be immediately recognizable to you, such as the open, save, print, undo, redo, and find uh, buttons. There are also several others with which we will uh, experiment, which we will introduce you to and, and teach you how to use as the semester progresses, such as uh, the, the weight, split file, select cases, value labels, and, and define variable sets buttons. Above that is the uh, menu bar, which contains all of the features that the toolbar offers and a lot more. The file and edit sections of the menu bar should be um, immediately recognizable to you and you should understand how those work. It's very similar to any other uh, Windows or, or Macintosh based program which you have used. Uh, the view menu isn't actually particularly useful. The most useful option under it is probably the value labels toggle which you can turn on and off and which we will explain later but that is also accessible from the toolbar. Now the data and transform menus they are what you will use to play around with the values in your data set. If you wanted to combine two different data sets because they shared either variables or they shared uh, cases. You could do that under the merge files feature in the data menu. You could add cases or add variables. There are many other things you can do here, uh, several of which are also available from the toolbar such as split files, select cases, and wait cases, which we will explain further later. Uh, the transform menu allows you to uh, do a lot of things, but most notably for our purposes is compute variables and recode variables either into the same or different variables. Now computing a variable means that you take given information in your data set and manipulate it in such a way that you create a new variable. Say for example you had two test scores uh, which your cases had taken and, and gotten results on and you wanted to create a new variable that was an average of those two test scores, you could do that with the compute uh, variable command. Or if you wanted to recode variables, say you had um, a Likert scale measurement for some question and you wanted to recode it uh, from a five-point scale to a three-point scale, you could do that within the recode command. 
the Analyze menu, as I stated earlier, is by far the heart of the SPSS and within it you can do all the descriptive and inferential statistical analysis you would ever want to do. Um, I can't do anything right now, of course, because I don't have any data, so if I wanted to run descriptives and frequencies here, it wouldn't allow me because I don't have any data to get frequency information on, but we'll fix that in a moment. Uh, the graphs menu allows you to create graphs without creating uh, statistical information. When you, when you do analyze your data, you almost always have the option to also create uh, graphs when you do that. So if I was to run uh, frequencies, the dialog box that would pop up, and I'll, I'll show you this in a moment, would also give me the option of creating various kinds of graphs. Well, if I just wanted the graph and didn't want the frequency information, I could do that under the graphs menu. Uh, Add-ons and window, those two menus, won't be very useful for us at all, so you're welcome to ignore those. The utilities menu may be useful depending on uh, what route you take for your research proposal and the project you carry out, specifically the define variable sets and use variable sets, but mostly the define variable sets uh, feature, which I, I can explain and will explain at a later date. Help can be accessed both through the menu button here and also by pressing F1. It's very similar to other help uh, index features you will have encountered in other programs. It's divided into three tabs, all of which access the same information in different ways. Uh, the contents tab here divides all of the help information up into books, starting from, you know, the most simplistic, the sort of overview of the base system and, and working your way through all of the different features and all of the different processes that you can carry out and use within SPSS. Index allows you to search keywords from all of those books and search allows you to search all of the words within all of the books listed everywhere. So uh, to, you may want to try any of these three depending on what exactly it is you're trying to get help on. Also, of course, uh, consult your SPSS textbook that you got for this course, and know that within any dialog box you can always also right-click, um, and often you will get information about what it is you're looking at. That's also true for the output, which I will introduce you to in a moment. So, right now we have no information in our data set. It's totally empty. I'm going to randomly uh, put the number 1 in the first uh, cell here, and I'm going to hit enter. What that's going to do is it's going to automatically make SPSS create a variable, because SPSS doesn't do anything unless it knows what kind of variables it's working with. If I just put a number in the cell and press enter, SPSS will assume that it is an interval ratio level variable, and it will assign it a, a very simple variable name, in this case var 000001, um, and now we're off to the races because we have uh, a variable and at least one piece of data. And if I now go back over to the variable view tab here at the bottom, you will see that SPSS has made a series of assumptions about this variable. And we will, we can change these based on our needs and rename and change the level of measurement, etc. And we will do that in future lessons. But for now, I'm just quickly going to show you uh, output window and then video tutorial. So if I wanted to analyze all of my complex data that I have in this data set, I would go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and I click on a couple of different things, but I will click on Frequencies for our immediate purposes. This opens up a dialog box, the Frequencies dialog box in this case, and I'm asked to pick which variable I would like to run my analysis on. I only have one, so I'm going to select that, move it over into the variables uh, area here, and then I have a choice of the kinds of statistics. I I want to be produced in my output. I'm going to collect uh, the mean, median, and mode, all of which should be one if I understand those calculations. I'm also going to select a bar chart just for the heck of it so you can see, and then I'm going to hit OK. When I hit OK, SPSS will open up the output window and give me the information I requested. Here we are. On the left hand side, you can see it's broken down by. Uh, it's different groups. I can select those, and on the right-hand side is actually the information. There's my very simplistic and useless bar chart. Up here is my very simplistic and useless um, summaries of uh, uh, central tendency. That concludes this tutorial. Have a nice day.